Kwasa Prako is a household name in Ghana. Ah, Alomobites. Which means that wherever you go, you will definitely find products of Kasaprako. You know what? Let me tell you something. Whenever you walk in the street of Ghana, you will definitely see people selling on the street. And whatever they are selling, make sure you check it out because you will definitely find the awake mineral water from Kasaprako. Whenever you go to clubs in Ghana, people really enjoy themselves with the Alomo beaters. You know what? It's not just the Alomo beaters that you can find. Kasaprako have so many alcoholic beverages which you can find in clubs especially chobas if you don't know what choba is google it and you find it because when people want to eat more all they need is a local gin and kasapraku got you the one thing i really cherish and love about musician is that they really support the brand kasapraku because whenever you see music videos you will definitely find alomo bites big shout out to shatawale for always promoting storm energy drink which is also from where kasapraku anytime i take domestic flight i mean Africa World Airline, you will definitely see awake mineral water in there. And let me tell you something, whenever you buy one of this, 10% goes to the cardiac center of Kolobu, which means that your money for your water is also healing people, which is absolutely amazing. But hey, I really want to go to the street of Ghana to ask them whether these products are being imported or this is made in Ghana, or do they know the owners of this product here in Ghana? Boss. Yeah. My name is Maya, yeah. What is your name? I'm Justice. Justice? Yeah. I have just a simple question to ask you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Which one is imported and which one is made in Ghana? The two of them is making in Ghana. The two of them is made in Ghana? Yeah, oh. By who? Uh, this one, I don't know. This name. one, you don't know? Yeah. What about this one? Uh, this one, I know it's Kasapreko. Hey, you know it's but Kasapreko. I don't know the name of uh, the, the produce, the this thing. No. This is Alombo Bites. Alombo Bites. And it's made by Casapreco. Casapreco, yeah. This is also Awake. Uh, awake. Made by Casapreco. Casapreco. Okay. Okay. Now you know, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, and I mean, as you see today, Casa Perco, from the age of 33 that he started, is now a big company, a global company out here. Yeah, but you know, 1989, how old were you doing that? Oh, I think I was, I was two years. Did Just you two years. two years? Yes. Did you see your father going through all the challenges settling, establishing settling, this business? Settling. What is um, one of the greatest challenges that you saw when your dad started this? I think um, one of the greatest challenges when he started was basically he was, it was a one-man show. Um, so he was doing everything. If you talk to him, he'll tell you he used to be the security man, he used to be the production manager, he used to be the accountant. He used to be the CEO, so he was doing everything on his own. Wow. Um, but as, as the company grew, he then started employing qualified people to support him. But at that stage, obviously, he didn't have the money to employ all these qualified people to support. So that was one of his biggest challenge, juggling all the rules um, as a startup. Mm. But he started, struggled, um, but eventually he made it. Before we continue, I want to see the first tank that Daddy used to est Certainly. establish the company. Certainly. Follow me, I'll show you. I'll show you the tank. Thank you. Maya, so uh -huh. this is the tank. Whoa. This is the tank that has made Casa Proc what it is today. Um, as you can see here, this tank could, I don't know how many it could do in a day, maybe 30 cases, maybe 50 cases. Um, but now Casa Proc is producing more than 200,000 cases a day a and day? selling all of it. Um, so this tank has made us where we are today. And the first product we did was um, the Casa Proc dry gin, which was a, a gin um, made by a Ghanaian um, and also enjoyed by Ghanaians. And today Casa Proc gin is the biggest gin um, in the country as we speak. But it started very small like this, um, manual. Um, with just five people helping Whoa. him out with this tank. With this small tank? With this small tank. So how many cuttings was he producing back then? Oh, back then I believe this would have produced maybe about 50 cuttings a day. And I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. From, I, I guess this would be from his backyard home or yes, something this, like that. This was in the garage. In the garage? Started. And um, I mean, my mom was supporting he had some other family members that were also supporting um, producing this um, product um, that has made what we are today. Can you tell me that Casa Proco is now a multinational company? Oh yeah, certainly. Casa Proco is the, also the biggest beverage company owned by a Ghanaian in Ghana. And we are actually aspiring to be the biggest food and beverage company. Hopefully by this year or next year, we'll be the biggest food and beverage company in Ghana. Um, and we also export into many other countries, especially in West Africa. Okay. So we are in Nigeria, we are in Togo, we are in South Africa, we are in Burkina, we are in Ivory Coast, um, Liberia. So Africa, we have a few countries that we export to. Um, if you go to the US, you certainly see our brands over there. Whoa. Um, especially in areas that you see Africans or West Africans. You certainly see Alomo Bitters, which is the, our number one product and our flagship product over here. Um, so anytime you travel, just go to a Ghanaian community and I'll be surprised if you don't see Alomo Bitters over there. <laughs> I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, but you know what? I've seen the town. And I'm seeing bottles, right? Yes. Definitely, Daddy did not have a bottle manufacturing company during that time. Okay, so during that time, um, as he started, mm. he couldn't even have imported bottles that we are using today. So he started with various various bottles. Um, so you see a pack or a case of from this tank. You see different different types of bottles, but with the same product. Um, and even the 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 carton back then, um, I'm sure you know, he put some of these bottles in, let's say, a case of box. Um, you find different boxes and put it in and sell. Um, and he will always tell you that the first day that the guys came back and they had sold 25 cartons, that day was his happiest day. And today, as, up till today, he still remembers that day. Um, so from that day, we knew that Ghanaians loved the product. He needed to put more effort into marketing, into packaging. So Casa Preco then, he then started putting effort into packaging. So he went ahead and um, developed his own bottle as the first Ghanaian beverage company to do, also do that. So if you see our bottles, you always see Casa Perco, um, embossed on it. That's how he started bringing in his own bottles. So we work, there used to be a, a bottle company in Ghana, but it's no more. So now we import most of the bottles from other countries. I really want to know, yeah, what does Casa Perco comprises of? Okay, 
So, Casa Perco, what we do here mm -hmm. is basically um, we position ourselves as the total beverage company. So we are doing water, which you know, Awake, Awake is our brand, mm -hmm. um, and it's a charity brand as well. Um, for Awake, we try to basically give back to the society. Wow. So any bottle you buy, we actually donate to the cardio center in Kolebu for the for the country to also get some money to do some surgeries on kids with holes in hats. And so that's the Awake brand, that, and that's our water brand. Mm. And then when it comes to the soft drinks, um, we are doing cola drinks, we are doing apple drinks, we are doing orange drinks. Um, so that's the soft drinks sector. Um, we also do energy drink, Storm Energy is our, is our biggest branch in terms of energy drink. Mm. Um, we have malts, um, that's high five choco balls. It's a malt drink with a chocolate um, in it. Mm. Um, and that's all to promote kind of, let's say, the cocoa in Ghana um, that we are producing. Um, we come to the spirits, we are producing Alumu bitters, which is our biggest brand. Um, we have Casa Perco Dry Gin itself, we have Lime Cordial, we have Carnival, and then we are also the franchise owners for Distel. So if you see Savannah, Hunters, um, which is a South African brand, um, we are the franchise owners with them over here. Um, we also recently just introduced uh, Freedom Beer. So um, in Ghana, you see that um, all the beers are owned by multinationals. Um, there's no player um, that's a Ghanaian within that beer space. So we are trying to play into that beer space with our Freedom brand. So in the next couple of months, you see Freedom also taking over the beer space. Uh, so give us some time. You see us <laughs> over there. I'm definitely um, going to give you some time, you know. So certainly, these are some of the brands that we do. We are into wines as well. So mm. we have Casapercotonic wine. And we also do import some wine from South Africa and bottle here as well. How many acres is this factory sitting on? So this current factory, we are sitting on a 10-acre factory. Um, and initially, as I said, we started from my, my dad's house. Um, and this is the place we are now. Um, and we also have another 10 acres in Kumase. That's our second factory, which we just started um, last month. Actually, we, we started um, about six months ago, six months ago, for the Kumase factory. Mm. And um, the business is growing, and as it's growing, we are even looking at starting some manufacturing in Nigeria and Liberia in the wow. next couple of months. I don't know if I have to ask you this question. What is the worth of Casapro Company Limited? Oh, so currently, Casapro Company Limited, um, I'll tell you, in terms of revenue, mm -hmm. I'll tell you that last year we were able to do over 600 million. And this year, our target is to do 1 billion Ghana cities in revenue. If you change it into dollars, you are looking somewhere around 160 million dollars on in terms of annual revenue. Um, and basically, that's what a company is generating. And how many people have you employed so far? Because I'm seeing a lot of people in this factory. So this factory, currently we are doing about 1,500 people. Um, and all of them are not in this factory. So we have sales guys all across the country. Um, we have uh, factory in Kumase as well and we have warehouses we have some in Tamale, Takrade, Ho, Techiman um, and Kumase itself so our employees are spread across the country and we have a few guys in Nigeria as well working for us. But uh, currently the people that are working here are all Ghanaians? Yes we have Ghanaians we have some other African guys over here we have some Nigerians working here mm. we have um, some guys from um, Zimbabwe over here as well. You know, so, this is one of the beautiful things that I love to hear, to see Africans coming together to, I mean, work oh, together as one. It, it's, it's just I mean, beautiful, you know. Um, talent, talent. We have the talent in Africa. Mm. We certainly have the talent. So um, entrepreneurs should certainly tap into the talent in Africa. You'll be amazed to see the, the talent. Some of our best engineers um, are from Nigeria and Zimbabwe, as I said, over here. My brother, tell me your name and where you're from. Oh, my name is Anthony Omoloki. I'm from Nigeria, Edo State, Nigeria. And you are working here in Casa Preco. Yes. As what? I uh, work here as uh, automation engineer. Oh, wow. You had experience from Nigeria and decided to bring it in to Ghana? Uh, yes. Uh, I've been coming here since 2012 um, to help them service their machines. And how does it feel like working for Casa Preco? Oh, it's great. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, Casa Preco is one of the leading um, uh, companies in West Africa and it's uh, homegrown. So it's an indigenous company and I'm proud to be one of them. Thank you so much for talking to me. You are the Zimbabwean guy that everyone is talking about? Yes. Okay, how long have you been working in here? I've been here for about two years now. What brought you here in the first place? Yeah, uh, well, 
it's uh, actually it was uh, something that I wanted to do coming to Ghana and getting an opportunity to work here presented that opportunity for me to come to Ghana. And how does it feel like working in Ghana? It's good. It's, it's good. good. Yes. I Ghana is it's a, it's a nice country. It's a nice country. Yes. So it feels good working in Ghana. And uh, how does it feel like working in Casa Preco? Well, working in Casa Preco, it's uh, for me, I can say it was a dream come true because Casa Preco has got the technology that I wanted to know, I wanted to learn, and it gave me that opportunity to get close to that technology. And as you have seen, Casa Preco, I think we are the best in Ghana. And we have the latest technology. If you want the latest technology, come to Casa Preco. And you will see that uh, our, our, our facilities, everything that we have here is top class, world class. I recently did a video in Somaliland about, about a beverage factory. And I realized that they were import, importing the, uh, is it the, what do you call it? The performance from another country. I want to know, I mean, you said you, you are the biggest in Ghana. Do you import or you manufacture it here? No, we manufacture our own preforms here. In Ghana? In Ghana, we manufacture our own preforms here. Um, and we are the only um, Ghanaian company doing that here in Ghana. Um, and it's actually also one of the biggest even manufacturing preforms, uh, manufacturing of preforms in Ghana over here. I will also ask you another question. You said Daddy used to collect key soap boxes. Currently, are you producing the boxes in Ghana? Currently, we used to buy the boxes, but currently we are we have our own manufacturing company also producing boxes that we also sell to other people in Ghana here. So, which means from um, start to finish, everything yes, is done so in this for, country. For us, um, we are into our strategy of backwards integration. So, we try to produce most of our, our raw materials here in Ghana, so that we don't always have to um, rely on importation um, and also um, reduce the pressure on the foreign currency. After hearing the entire story of Casa Preco, it makes me feel like the story of everything is possible in Africa, Casa Preco really represents that story. Because, you know, I normally interview people and people normally say that, oh, it's not possible in Africa, you have to travel abroad before you make it and all of that. I just want to know, did Daddy ever left the country before he was able to come up with this concept of Casa Preco? Um, no, um, certainly. I mean, there are lots of possibilities that can happen in Africa. Um, for, for my father, he was in the, in the West, so he grew up in the West, in his village. He didn't um, even complete school. Um, Please, uh, are you trying to say daddy is a village boy? No. <laughs> <laughs> now you can continue. I mean, from, 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 the, from the village itself, um, he got inspiration from there that certainly from his village he has to come out and after he's made it he's gone back to support them um, and even before he started this factory he had never traveled outside of Ghana before so he got all the inspiration within Ghana itself and as I said he had a zeal to move out of the village and make it um, as a business person and um, so when he came to Accra he did different jobs. I mean, from a taxi driver, from um, working into working in restaurants. He had different jobs, and eventually he went into gold, and eventually moved into the beverage sector. And I mean, he tells me that even when he was a, when he was a driver at Valco, um, he used to drive his kids. The, the, he used to drive his boss's kids into um, the most expensive international school in Ghana, and eventually. He ended up taking his kids to that school in Ghana. So, for inspiration-wise, I'll say that he got most of inspiration within Ghana, even before he stepped foot out of Ghana. I mean, did Daddy um, completed school, or he dropped um, out from school? For him, his parents did not have the, the, the money to take him to school. Um, so, I think after, after high school, he didn't continue. But through his hustle and other businesses, small businesses that he entered into, um, when he got some money, he tells me that he started even educating himself. Um, so, eventually he would do his own short, short courses somewhere else um, to educate himself and get to know what is going out there. But he did not complete school. Um, even though education is very important, um, I believe that as businessmen and as entrepreneurs coming up, uh, is the zeal. It's the zeal that if you have it and you believe that you can do it, certainly um, push yourself and you certainly make it.
push yourself and you will certainly make it let me know like you're talking about your dad so much today but i really want to know more about you which year did you take over the company um so officially um i've been part of the company for almost 12 years um i came I came in 2010 to join the company, but I mean, as I was a kid, certainly I visited the factory uh, most times on my vacations and stuff like that. Um, so I always had the desire to certainly work with my dad and the family. Um, but in 2015, I became the CEO of the business. And as a CEO, certainly we have to grow the business for the next generation as well. Mm. Uh, my dad was able to grow it to a certain stage. when. He, when he exited the company, we were only doing the spirits, uh, so Alumu Bitters Gin and um, other alcoholic drinks. Uh, when I came, with the support of other family members, um, we moved into the water business aggressively. Wow. Um, we started the soft drinks aggressively. Um, we partnered with Estelle to become the franchise owners of Savannah and Hunters over here. Um, as I said, we started a beer business uh, that we hope to grow, Freedom Beer. And we built a new factory in, in Kumasi just um, six months ago. Um, so certainly, um, we've also contributed our quota and we'll keep going. We'll keep going. We are still young and we hope to also leave a bigger business to the next generation that will come and take over. I, I would love you to take me around the factory because I know people out there really want to see what really goes on in the factory. Certainly, I will. I will. It's certainly um, a magnificent um, factory that uh, most people that see it are very surprised so i will certainly take you inside i want to say thank you so much and um, i'll see you in the next one all right thank you